Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon and although I told you last week that we now have the schedule of Tuesday code, Thursday vlog style video, today might not be so much about the code at all because we're gonna talk about a super interesting topic which is of course related to the current launch of my software startup manual course. And what I want to talk about today is how to build your um, maybe even startup app, side project, idea, whatever it is, using a bunch of great services and everything using JavaScript. So we'll go along the tutorial or article that I've written and take a look at some of the aspects that I mentioned. The very first idea is that last year or maybe it was two years, I don't know, um, ago, I was building a little startup app with a friend of mine. Although I knew I could build the backend with JavaScript and I can do the front end with Ionic, it took me months to implement only the basic functionality because I had to look at basically everything. So I haven't written um, a lot of backends with JavaScript then, back then. That was maybe one problem. But the other problem was there are a lot of great things that you can include even for free, but still you have to take a look into them and how they work. That's what took me a lot of time. And that's also the reason why I created the online course called the Software Startup Manual. You can find the link below this video. It is an in-depth video course and I do it as you can see from my face there. It is pretty long, so it contains a lot of knowledge all about building both a backend and a front end, including a bunch of great services. So really a recommendation there. But for now, um, let's take a step back because I wanted to tell you what you might need to include. And if you already got a startup and perhaps you're already fired up about this, uh, I don't want to decrease your motivation, but things aren't that easy in the beginning. Only to get some uh, boilerplate code, right? You need to set up the server, uh, then you get some database for which MongoDB is actually a great choice if you rely on the mean stack. So the mean stack means Mongo, Express, Angular, okay, six, not really, and Node. You can use all of this actually in one project. Um, in our case, it is more, or in my case, it is more separated. So the server is the main part, Mongo, Express, and Node. And the front end is the AI part, Angular Ionic part. Still, it is in general the idea of the mean stack because MongoDB, Express, Node.js, those things work pretty great together. Um, and you can easily add authentication systems using Passport.js. So to implement the JSON web token authentication, but still you need the register, the login, the user management, updating details, maybe password recovery, a lot of functionality just to get started. Okay, and then on top, of course, you need to make some money, so you need to handle payments. And actually, PayPal isn't that easy to use, so um, most of the time, Stripe is recommended. And I also picked Stripe for my project, which were great. Okay, this looks like the German page of it, but it is anyway free to use. It has a great integration into JavaScript, so works perfectly with our own code. Also, uh, with Stripe, you get some nice webhooks. So uh, if a user makes a payment on Stripe and you have defined a webhook URL, Stripe will actually make a request back to your server. So you got to define a block inside the server code, uh, of course, as well. So just like in the course, this will look like this. So all the different events, you don't need to process everything of them, but these can be catched by the server and then you get some data back and can update your users, which means you can easily implement recurring payments. So every time payment happens, the uh, Stripe will notify your server and you can handle uh, to store the information and set the expire date for the user and all of these things. Again, you haven't written a single line of functionality up until this point and implementing both login, database, um, payments, is really basic stuff that you will need in basically all the projects, right? So that takes a lot of time and it took me a lot of time figuring out things back then. What happens afterwards is you see some cool functionality, some cool technology, you hear about push notifications, about emails. Okay, emails isn't that cool anymore, but anyway, you need it, right? It's not mandatory, but it's nice to have or 
you should have those features, right? Then you start to implement automatic email sending for which I actually uh, used Mailgun. So definitely recommendation there as well. It's free um, easily to integrate with JavaScript in your Node.js backend. And then um, you uh, got to use push notifications. As I said, one signal works great. And for uh, data storage, this actually depends a bit on where you host your application. So um, that's a little bit from the end of the article. The Node.js backend that I build in general, uh, I deploy to Heroku and you can't have a file system or upload to Heroku because the instances will be cleared once you reload the server. So you got to store the data somewhere else, which is actually a good pattern. So to separate the data from the actual uh, logic of your application, um, that's great. And in that case, Amazon AWS works great. And again, integration of a third party thing into your code, no idea how it works. Figuring out takes hours, sometimes days. And same for one signal integration and Mailgun and all of these things that you might want to have. And at that point, you have already spent a lot of hours only on the back end. Maybe you have then at some point implemented the real functionality, whatever it is. Maybe it's just the, uh, come on microphone. Maybe it's just the new uh, to do is clone or whatever it might be. But still, this will already very likely take you not only days, but weeks, right? And add on top, if you need to figure out everything, it will take you like double the time. And then at some point you're ready, you got the REST API and you build the front end. And then I get a lot of choice. Of course, I recommend Ionic because I'm really an Ionic fanboy and everything I do is somehow related to Ionic. But still, I think it's maybe the best choice in some cases, not all, but if you want a website, and also a mobile application, it is definitely one of the best choices because you get to have one code base, which you can, um, as you can see in my nice little animation, which you can build so that it works both as a website for with a responsive design and also as a small mobile application on smaller screens. And of course, uh, you can deploy it to the native app stores and you can also deploy Ionic as a website and you have the PWA support baked in right into your project. So that's why I would recommend Ionic for the front end, but as well integration of some of the topics like push notifications or the Stripe form for catching credit card information isn't that easy. Um, this will very likely also take a lot of time, but you can figure out those things, um, especially if you already got the back end. Uh, things are a bit easier in the front end side of things. Um, but of course, uh, the time varies that you can take to uh, polish your design. So if you got a designer and you want to make everything perfect for all the designs for your startup, of course, that will take a lot of time, right? But the good news uh, here is, and going back to the title of this video, or is it the title? I don't know, actually, yeah, with JavaScript. So JavaScript uh, helps us here as well because we can use Angular, we could use React or Vue or uh, non-framework of all, but still we can in general stay in the JavaScript domain, which is great so we don't have to learn another language. All of this, um, I know that uh, you got questions as well why you're not using this or that. I've written about this in the end of the article about the alternative. Most popular question I got was, why are you not using Firebase then? Firebase is really great and I've used Firebase as well in some projects, but you don't own everything with Firebase, right? With Node.js, you can build your full server. You got the email templates and this and that and you get the full control over everything that happens. With Firebase, on the other hand, you rely on their system, then you need to use their cloud functions and tweak things here and there, and maybe the flow isn't that cool, but you're not too deep in it and have to use it. We must turn back. <laughs> Those are things that come if you rely on something like Firebase. No question about it, it is great, and I'll very likely create another course on Firebase and using those things, but there's definitely also the use case to have your own backend with Node.js completely built by yourself. And on the other hand, of course, there are other frameworks. Ionic is just one. We got the React Native, we got Flutter. What else is currently hyped? I don't know. With like Flutter, you got a mobile application that looks great, but no website. With React Native, 
Uh, you got the cool mobile application, but you have to implement some uh, logic to share the code of your React Native app with your React web application. I'm not so deep into React, sorry about things being wrong here, but I still think that the Ionic one code base approach and running everywhere where the web is, is still the most easiest and the fastest solution if you want to get your startup out. At some point then your app might be ready, your backend is ready and you need to deploy it. Now you again got a lot of choices how to deploy the stuff you've built. And I think one of the easiest ways is actually to use Heroku for your code, only for the backend part. Because with Heroku you basically get to run one git push command your code will be submitted, they build it, and your application is real on. That is really super easy. Also, you can connect a MongoDB to your Heroku instance, which makes things a lot easier. For the website that you get, uh, you can use basically everything that you got to host uh, your WordPress blog or your fan page of this channel. I don't know what. Firebase also offers by now hosting so to some degree i have used firebase in this course and i would also recommend it because the hosting is free and it is easy to set up and then you're only left with the task to deploy native applications right this part is maybe not the coolest one because you get to set up all the android and ios uh, store entries with all the screenshots of your application on a device and on the other device and then you get to put in the information all of these things just they are super boring and in the end apple will reject your application and then you can celebrate that you do everything again just kidding um if you do everything right of course apple won't reject your application hopefully but still the apple developer program costs i think 99 dollars per year and android is 25 ones so both of these uh, memberships are paid of course android is a lot cheaper than ios so with this video i don't want to scare you building your own software startup or whatever and i also don't want to uh over market my software startup course but you should definitely check it out and buy it link below the video it is great buy it things aren't that easy if you're fired up and motivated in the beginning for an idea i have been there many times before and then you get into the code and you see that it's actually a lot more i just want to prepare you for this and show you the technologies i used in my cases for building a startup like this if you want the shortcut again my course offers everything to get you started with all those technologies but it's of course not like this is rocket science and you have to purchase the course to get started this is just a shortcut you can figure out everything all of these tools stripe mailgun aws one signal whatever all of them have great documentations all of them are free you can tinker around with each of them and completely learn the technologies by yourself of course no question about it i hope you enjoyed this little overview about the great technologies out there that you can combine and connect to build great things before i started this project i actually wasn't aware how uh, easy it was looking back so it still took time but it is still a lot easier than you might think it is so you get access for free to everything like 10 years ago I don't know if there would have been something that you could so easily integrate for payments right and then all the file upload stuff and those things Everything is really super easy these days, giving you know some JavaScript and you know how to read the documentation. I would love to know if you have built any applications based on this stack or if you plan to do so and maybe uh, now find the courage to do it because you've seen that all the technologies are available and you can easily use them. Uh, of course, if you got any questions, also leave a comment below the video and also hit the like button to uh, get my video upvoted because, you know, I'm on a quest to 100,000 subscribers, so your support would mean a lot to me. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching this video. Check out the course once again. And of course, I'll see you soon inside the next Thursday vlog episode.